when I thought about the practice of law, let's take the thousand lawyer law firm. That's the easy part. Client comes in, receptionist meets them, receptionist puts them into a conference room, receptionist calls my secretary, my secretary calls an associate, the associate goes down and meets the client, I get a call, we then interview the client. First there's what? Intake. You sit there and you do all the initial information at intake. All right, let's switch over to the solo practice or a small firm. Client calls you, client knocks on the door, there's no secretary, there's no receptionist. You, the lawyer, open the door. You, the lawyer, greet the client. You take the client into your office if there's no conference room, and you do your intake. It's not the trappings of the firm that make the difference. It's the intake. It's the, the ability to get that critical information and at that very moment form a strategy. It's no different at the so small firm than it is at the large firm on intake. <laughs> this part that I love, billing. Sorry, for those for those who do not practice uh, for a nonprofit, uh, whatever your rate is, uh, you're entitled to be compensated and paid for the work that you do. But how do you accomplish that? Well, some people will keep their bills and their time on a tablet. Some people will keep them in their head. Some people won't bill the client. Billing is critical. And it's critical because if you don't get those bills generated, if you don't get those bills out, you're not going to get paid. And it's not going to be worth the practice because you're going to start feeling frustrated. Big firm, when you'll say to somebody, hey, I'd like to make a pitch to um, Northrop Grumman. Or I'd like to go down into the D.C. Police Department and pitch a monitor program. Now, as, so, as a big firm, I would tell them that, and the big firm, in a day or so, would have me a full report on all of those potential clients. In the small firm, for me, I just go to Google. You know, everybody teases me because I go on Google looking for everything. But for the small firm, you know, you figure out north of Grumman, who's the CEO, who's the general counsel, if it's the D.C. Police Department, whatever corporation it is, whatever client it is, you'll figure out and you go through and you find a way to market what? Yourself. And marketing yourself, a lot of people don't like to do that. A lot of people don't like to say that I have a unique ability and I'd like to share that with you. Uh, so as one of the things I really would like to get across uh, this morning is you do have the ability to get out there and market yourself. And it's critical. Uh, that you do that. If you get through marketing, you get through collection, uh, you get into business development, uh, I do a lot of speaking engagements and you can see them. I enjoy talking. Uh, and you know, as, as a lawyer, you know, that's, if you have the, uh, the colloquial, the, the gift of gab, um, it helps you in what we do. It helps you to be able to frame everything that I do as a lawyer. I try to put in terms of trying to sell, tell and sell a story. So if I'm going out to, to pitch myself, uh, and I, I wish all of my clients could be at Northrop Grumman, but if I'm going out to, uh, there's a fatal accident, uh, police shooting, whatever it is, and there's a family out there, there's a mom and a dad, or there's a family uh, that's, that's grieving, uh, and somebody calls you and says, hey, uh, the family would like to talk to you about representing them. I make the same preparation and pitch to that family that I would do for a large corporation. The client, the potential client, is no different. It's the mechanism, it's the planning uh, that you do in getting ready uh, for that. Part of the practice of law, and a very, very large part of that practice, is the business side. And if you don't, hand, as I say, you don't handle your business, the law firm suffers. So you can't run a law firm without administratively staffing and structuring a, a business. What I recommend is learning how to outsource and add to your team. 
There's no need for everybody to feel that they have to build a big firm. If you need a PR person, find one. Contract it out. If you need somebody to crunch numbers, get a CPA, get somebody to help you crunch those numbers. There's no need for you to change the internal structure of your law firm. Add the people you need by contract. Court filings, uh, court rules. When I walk into court, I used to walk in with boxes. You know, I'd have all my files, all the books. You know, we'd have two pulleys, we'd lug them in the court. Well, now you get on your iPad uh, all the rules, all the federal sentencing guide, everything you want, civil, criminal, federal, superior court, they're all on a digital electronic version. Your client files now are on your laptop. Uh, you can take a printer in, a small printer, sit it in on your desk in the courtroom and print whatever you need. Times have really changed. You're gonna hear about social media. It scares the daylights out of me uh, because people are always going on looking at your client's information. When you say to your client, shut up or put it on private, they don't do that. Uh, and they're, you know, just be prepared to deal with, with the issues of social media. I wanted to talk about some of the advantages and disadvantages of the small firm and the big firm. Any ideas on advantages of the big firm? Support, help, salaries. <laughs> to the client, how about the client? You get lower hourly rates. You know, I one time went from $900 an hour at a big firm, I say to people, how do I charge people that? And they said, you know, that's what our hourly rates are. And I won't say what I went to, but you cut it drastically. <laughs> so the, that, that helps. How about conflicts? You know, small firms, you still have to have some type of system in place to check for conflicts, either on clients or witnesses. More flexibility. I am the boss. How about some, bless you, how about some disadvantages? Any disadvantages that people can talk about? Disability. Small firm, can't yeah. Make much can't make much money. Well, sometimes you can. If I know people who do get get a nice hit on a PI or uh, make a lot of money. You, I, I agree with you. Not, it's, it's guaranteed. But I've got friends who have small firms who make a lot more money than I do. Um, just if, if you're slowed down, that's it. And it also goes by the critical mass. As a small firm, we've all, anybody here who is, is in a small firm, a solo practitioner, we've all been in that. You get stuck in a trial, you get appointed by the court, you're making $125 an hour, you're in a four week trial, the rest of your practice goes right down the tube. How do you handle that? You find people to stand in for you since you don't have that critical mass. Don't let your clients don't down and don't lose that business. Have people stand in for you. The other, other disadvantage that I thought of is there's less accountability. As a partner, as an associate in firm, if I have a substance abuse issue, if I can't get to work, one of my partners is going to say, whoa, something's going on here. You know, hey, Billy, you got to deal with this. As a solo practitioner, you're on your own. There's nobody to hold you accountable. So you have to really make sure that you take care of yourself and try to have somebody, somebody uh, to be a paralegal, but somebody that you're there to talk to. I would say that my final thought on that is, we've talked a lot about the business side of the practice law, some of the emotional sides of the practice law, and we haven't talked about your giving back. How do you give back? Pro bono. If you can do something pro bono for somebody, you know, I, I, I do death penalty cases. I do death penalty appeals as kind of my pro bono. Uh, I've done a lot of homicides over the years as a lawyer representing these people. Um, 
and am able to, to do pro bono uh, death penalty uh, post-conviction appeals. Find something that you enjoy uh, and try to give back there. And my final thought is that while we talk about this as a business, small or large, uh, take care of yourself. You know, you can't put so many hours in that you neglect your health. You can't put so many hours in that you neglect uh, people who are dear to you, your, your family, your children, uh, significant other, yourself. Find a way to make sure that at the end of the day that you separate from the practice of law and always take care of yourself. Uh, if you are not able to function in a way that is acceptable to the requirements of the bar, there's nothing, you're not going to practice law. So first and foremost, um, take care of yourself. Make sure you have that engagement letter. And in that engagement letter, I always have a paragraph in there on fees, and in there it says, we reserve the right to increase fees uh, on an annual, our firm increases fees on an annual basis. Um, so I put it in the engagement letter. And, but clients are always gonna tell you this is too much. I mean, you know, that, that's something that, that I will say to them when they say to me, hey, this is too much. And I say, all right, um, I'll take 10% off. You, you charge what the market will bear or what, and what you're worth. I can tell you that now $400, $400 is not, and what we practice is not a lot. That's a very good question, and because most, most trial lawyers in small firms don't want to do this, and suddenly it's something you keep pushing away, but that's your money. What do I do? I hire a collection lawyer, and I, the collection lawyer will say, I like 10% of what I bring into you, so on those collections, don't sit there and stress on them. There are lawyers, I'm sure somebody in here who specializes in collections. Uh, outsource it. Those are my thoughts on the small firm practice. Uh, what's my preference? My preference is a small firm. Uh, and I think it gives you all the latitude and all the control that you really want. So if you're wondering, should I stay, should I go? Um, if it works for you, uh, find a way to perfect it. Uh, if you're not happy, maybe look to do something else. But don't abandon the concept of small firm because you're frustrated. I think it's very, very honorable, successful, and profitable uh, practice of law.